What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we hope to get the Tesla complete, except for like the front and some trim pieces, but that can be bought at any time and it's not visible. And the alignment, it's hard to find. Up, no place wants to do an alignment for a Tesla, so that's kind of what we're having trouble with, but we hope to get that done soon. And at the end of the video, we're gonna go on a test drive and see if all the, our alignment that, alignments that we did works and come back and change any if we need to. And so let's get started and take a look at all the new parts that we bought for the Tesla. All right guys, so one of the hard parts about this build was getting parts. So we've just been basically watching eBay and as a part comes available, we'd get it. But to get a bumper shipped was like over $600. And I was, I went on a little trip hike in the Appalachian Trail and I found this place that had thousands and thousands of bumpers over in Georgia, off of close to Atlanta. So I stopped there, got a bumper, it was 160 bucks, so I couldn't beat it. And we got the guy that helped us with the Carvette steel tree. He helped us paint it up, got it nice. So the only thing, the bumper didn't come with anything else. So we had to get a wiring harness and it was missing one of these parking sensors. So we had to order one of those. We got these turn indicator fog lights. And then this I think is the a trim piece like a grill that goes right here got that and these wheel liners i actually found those in china had them shipped to us found on ebay they were super cheap and they're actually tesla parts since tesla is in china so we're getting parts all over the place and like tyler was saying we're gonna hope to finish it up today except for the big trunk or frunk and this trim piece, which it don't really matter. Oh, I don't think I ever mentioned, we got this working, this little side camera. We, had, we bought one for this side and that side, and this side didn't work. So we sent it back, they sent us another one, installed it, still didn't work. So we did a hard reset on the computer and then it worked perfectly. So thinking if we have any issues with these sensors, maybe we can just do another hard reset and get it back working. So let's start putting it all together and see what all we need to do. All right. All right, let's start by putting the wiring harness on the bumper. Um, let's start on this side because this is the main connector, which is right here. So let's put the parking sensor on first. Just snap it all the way in. And it's the main connector, which gives power. I think this is the fog light, so we'll just keep this right here. Um, here's the other parking um, sensor and the last one. No, they got a whole bunch of them. I think this is the temperature probe where it reads the outside ambient temperature. The new grill that we got here, should this should clip into that. So just keep working your way down. Get it all lined up. One of them should be missing. You can just put them in loose for now. All right, so we need to get the other one. Open that up. All right. And this wire here, on the diagram it shows that it connects to this tow hitch cover, which it don't, it don't have a piece. If you notice this black tow hitch cover, this connected into here for some reason, but ours don't have it. So I don't even really know what this far. All right, we just got all the parking sensors on. Now we're gonna put the fog light on. Yeah, they're actually not fog lights. They're um, turn indicators. To get fog lights, they were 300, 350 each, and these were just $99. And we didn't really need the fog lights. We wanted to save the money. So we dig the other one out. We get those in. This side just, let's see, it goes this way. It clips into these. And then we're gonna have to get some screws. It didn't come with any screws. So I went over to Harbor Freight and I found this little kit. All kind of different size screws in this box. 
So I'm hoping between either this or our big box of screws over there, we'll find something that fits and we can get these secured down. So to line it up, let's see, you know you want your glass to be facing out. And look at these clips. And you have these holes, two and two, so just line all that up. Watch your wire. Make sure you're not pushing it through. Let me let these, let's see, get this one out. There you go. And then we got a screw, how many? One, three screws. Now you can go ahead and do the other one, then we have to find the screws. I sure hope we have some, because I want to get this done today. There you go, you got it now. All right, let's dig through our screw box and see if we can find some screws. All right, so that's how we're gonna to have to do it. We're gonna to have to use washers. We're gonna use the number I think we're using number 10 by three quarter screw. The Tyler's digging in our bucket, trying to find us some washers. How many we got? Three? So far three, we need two more. We got four, so we need yeah, two more to find those. These little screws, the screw head just goes straight through. So we're gonna have to put them in with some washers, which is not a problem. I'm glad we was able to figure something out. Go ahead and plug this in, make sure that's even a right connector. Hate to do all this and it's not even right. So this has two pins on the inside. Looks like this had three. So I guess if you had the actual fog light, you'd, you'd have one more pin in here. Just get these started. You don't want to go too tight, it'll it'll crack it. It's in there. All right. Finish this one up. So what size was it? Ten by three quarter. Let's get three of those. We just get them all loosely started. That way everything is lined up. You don't ever want to do one all the way super tight. Then the other ones won't be lined up. All right, the last step for the bumper is we're gonna put this air screw grill and fit that in. Yeah, so let's get that unpacked. Get it, see how it fits. And then we can get this ambient air temperature probe connected. So far the front bumper is going together pretty good. Just hope that's the right grill. It looks good. Probably got to cut it more to get it all out. Oh, there you go. Come set it right here for now. Now we have to get it figured out. So this is a little bit tricky. You gotta line up this pin, squeeze this pin in, and then you got connectors on front and back. So you're kind of having to do it all at one time. And the front, that's catching. So 
So we're gonna have to get more washers. We already put the bucket of bolts up. Did you think they had any more washers in there? It was hard to find just the four more or five we needed last time. I'm gonna have to dump it out on the ground and dig through it. Cause that's it. How many are we gonna Two. need for this one? We need four more. All right. Yeah, so that's in. Find us four more washers and we'll screw this down and get this installed. All right, we got the grill on. I think this is where the temperature probe goes. It just slides in, connects in. I think these two we have to fit with two holes down here and then the rest of it we're just going to have to see how it goes. Grab it. All right, I got it. All right, we got the bumper on. I think it looks really, really good. I'm not sure if these are the correct bolts though, because when the front is on, we might have that, the front might have some bolts that go right there, so I'm not sure. The only other thing I noticed, this parking sensor, see how that gas gets white? And this, we're missing it, so we might have to get some of those little trim pieces for that. This one, or paint them. Like that one's missing, this one has one, but it's black. So we'll figure all that out. The bumper match is really good. This little piece that I bought aftermarket, it's a little off if you look at it a certain way in the light. Yeah, but you it's can hard tell the difference. See. So let's go take it for a test drive, see if the um, parking sensors work, if we get any messages or codes for that, and start troubleshooting that. All right, let's go. All right, we're taking a little test drive. So far, so good. We don't didn't get any codes or showing anything screwing up. So next test we want to do, we want to get on a straight road and see if it's still drifting to the right because we changed that tie rod on the right side. And I think I got it pretty close, but I might have to do one more turn on the tie rod just to bring the wheel in just a tad bit. And that way it'll go straight. So. Get us on a little straight section, get the wheel straight, and then let off the wheel and see if we drift over. All right. We're getting the center since nobody's coming. All right, so let's get it completely in the center. Get the wheel lined up just right. Now let off the wheel. See, we still drift into the right. I think it's not bad. I think one more turn is going to do it. Yeah, we're drifting. Yeah, so we'll go back and turn the tie rod one more turn to bring the right wheel in. And that'll get us pretty close that way. We're probably going to have to go all the way to New Orleans to, to do the alignment. I don't want to drive it. We're probably 50 or 60 miles from New Orleans. And I don't want to drive it too far out of alignment but it's pretty close right now. All right, we just got back. Now we're gonna take the tire off and turn the tie rod one since the car's turning to the right a lot. So we're gonna get that done and possibly test drive it again and see how it turns out, if it's better or worse. get the tie rod out and do one turn and I think that's going to be enough to bring the front tire in just a little bit. A 
and it should make it stay steady on the road. All right, we're taking another little test drive after we brought that tie rod in a little bit, and it's it's doing perfect. It's not pulling no more. It's driving straight, steering wheel straight. So that was a huge success. So that fixed that perfectly. So now all we really have left to do is put the what fender liners in. Then we have that big trim piece to put under the car that connects to the bumper like a water shield and that'll be it we'll probably do that off camera because that'll that's going to take a while but today was a big success got the bumper on and all that works looks like all the sensors are working because whenever we pull up to something it's showing it'll show the distance like i don't know if that's the radar or the parking sensor see how now we have these little cones showing up that's over here but if we pull up to something it shows the actual distance so I assume that that is the parking sensors I don't know but we're not getting any code saying we have a fault see how that's doing that and I would think the radar would only show the front so if we get close to the truck it should show something on the side. Yeah, see? Showing it on the side of the car. And the radar's in the front, so it's got to be the parking sensors that's working. Park. I still have to go through all this because I don't know if the air condition's staying on when we get out or I don't really understand any of it all right so what's left is we have the splash pad and we have the wheel liners we're gonna do that off camera though since that kind of takes a while yeah so the car drove great I got this tire lined up perfectly now all it took was that one last turn on the tie rod the only other little thing that I'm not liking is see this gap pretty tight and it slowly gets bigger to here so we'll probably have to disconnect this fender and then scoot it in just a little bit and that way we can line everything up since the since we have a bumper now but Tesla's kind of famous for coming off the assembly line and not having the best gaps anyway so I don't know how much better we're gonna get it but we'll get it a little bit better so make sure you click right here to view all our other Tesla videos and follow us on Instagram at Swamp Boys Garage so you can see all our um, posts. So make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next time.